welcome. Uh, so maybe before starting um, my real presentation, I'm very proud to announce that uh, with uh, Eric Cohen and um, Axel Levon, with the heavy support of uh, Birgit and the AEA, we, we launch the French chapter of the uh, Association of Enterprise Architects. So, uh, wow, very proud to, to announce that uh, today. Uh, but we're not so proud because for many years there is no French chapter of the AEA, so we just correct, just fi fix it. Uh, so, French people, please um, uh, come to us to, to discuss that, and uh, we have bring more news, maybe two days and in the a uh, few next weeks and months just to recruit uh, people for the French chapter. So that, that's it, okay? Um, I'm starting. Uh, it's called Continuous Architecture. Uh, just remember that it's uh, really a work in progress because uh, things are changing uh, very rapidly and we are just starting to really thinks about uh, agility and um, architecture. Okay, uh, just a few words on Aris I know you, you know Eric, so it's okay. We are, uh, we are happy to say that we are the French leader on EA. Uh, just a few words with, about uh, Aris Academy because we are very proud to certify a lot of people in TOGAF, um, Archimate, and we start uh, thanks to uh, Sylvain, to have the, the first uh, IT for IT certified in France. So we are very happy with that. Okay. Uh, so uh, it's quite easy. Why continuous architecture? So I will try to go fast on that. Uh, I hope you are uh, already convinced that we need to have agility and architecture. So that's what we call continuous architecture. So what is continuous architecture, and I want to do my, uh, the art of the presentation about how to do that, or how we start to try to do that. Okay, so what's the problem with the agility and the architecture? So I think that this is the, the best picture uh, I found on the web to, to explain the problem. Uh, people from the agile side want some salt. So he asked to, uh, an architect to have the salt. And 20 minutes, uh, 20 minutes later, you don't have any salt or like, any nothing, okay? Uh, so what's the problem? The architect is preparing a better solution than just giving salt. Uh, and that's the problem with the agility and architecture. They are both uh, okay, but are not really working uh, seamlessly together. And yes, the, it's right, you want the salt just now. And yes, you're right, Mr. Ar the architect. On the long term, it's better to create some things for any uh, sort of uh, condiment. But oh, you are managing the, these two parts, okay? Uh, there is a way, but it's not uh, an easy way. Uh, if you're from the, if you're from Wales, maybe you may recognize this mountain. Uh, I, I do not remember the name because it's, it's sort of a Welsh name. So, but that thing, the famous mountains in Wales. Uh, there is a way, there is a difficult way between not enough analysis, and that's maybe from the uh, agile part. They want to go uh, fast. They want to try and learn, and they do not do maybe enough analysis. And on the uh, other part, there is the too much analysis uh, problem. And it's probably the, the way the classical architects want to do that. So we have to find this very, very narrow way to, to do the most things. OK? So I'm started with a, a quote from Ward Cunningham, who is, who know who is Ward Cunningham? Maybe you don't know who is Ward Cunningham, uh, but Ward Cunningham is recognized as the inventor of the technical debt metaphor. Uh, 
Uh, it was no, a long time ago that he invented the technical debt metaphor, which is, of course, some things you already know. If you're a real architect, you already see a technical debt face-to-face, uh, -face, uh, and it's, it's not funny. Uh, but Walt Cunningham recently um, writes more articles to explain, and uh, this is another good explanation uh, about uh, why we need to have this continuous architecture concept. Because you do your, your best, but you only produce a solution that reflects your current understanding of the problem. As the, the truth is that your current understanding is always a partial understanding. So even if you take more time to analyze the problems, you still have a partial understanding. And maybe you could analyze forever, you still have a partial understanding. So the way to reconcile that is to have uh, feedback. So just maybe I just stop to why we decide to call that continuous architecture. Maybe if you Google um, agile architecture, well, there is something called agile architecture, there is something called uh, evolutionary design, emergent design, evolutionary architecture. Uh, in Aris more, we like to say that architecture is from end to end in programs and projects. So for us, it's quite natural to say that's a continuous architecture effort. And of course, it's clearly related to what is called uh, continuous integration and continuous delivery, which is part of the revolution uh, in our um, ecosystem. So we like continuous architecture, but just call that uh, agile architecture, emergent design, evolutionary architecture. That's okay for, for me. Okay, so what is really new? Um, it's not really new, but uh, the big difference between architecture before and with continuous architecture is that, in fact, we, we want to have feedback. Uh, so it's a, just a new cycle, learn, build, measure, which is very, very different from our classical cycle, which is think, build, run. And most of the time, there is no clearing between think and build, not clear links between build and run, and uh, not enough, maybe no feedback at all between run and think. So the new thing for architects is that you start, yes, with a bit of thinking, but you're in a feedback uh, and interaction with the build phase and the, the measure phase during the, the run phase. Okay. Uh, so the idea of feedback, of course, is not new. But by the way, the Agile is not really new. Uh, I think that's the 20th anniversary of the Agile Manifesto, by the way. So it's not so new, okay? Uh, for many architects are new, that's uh, a really, really a new thing. Many of them are really happy to just to think, and then other people build, and then other people run. And if it's not running well, that's not my business. I'm sure if you're here, you are not this kind of architect. But uh, there is this sort of architect. Okay. So what is continuous architecture? Is architecture with feedback, that's all. So I don't want to, to elaborate a new definition of what is architecture. Because uh, I think that's the, the real... Um, uh, the real way to, to know if you are speaking with an architect, you start with redefining what is architecture. So now I'm fed up with just redefining every, every day what is architecture. So architecture is architecture, okay? Continuous architecture is architecture with feedback, okay? That means that you, you start continuous architecture when you stop doing just big upfront design. That means you do all the design before and then hoping that people build it right and run it right. Okay, um, and the real, real uh, challenge is to have shorter and richer feedback cycles. Uh, shorter, that means probably in months rather than in years, and maybe the more continuous we will be, more in weeks than in months, and maybe one day more in hours than 
or days than weeks, and then hours than uh, uh, days. Uh, but today, just have uh, feedback in months will be a, a real success for many, many of our contexts. Uh, and the, uh, the other point is to have real feedback, richer feedback, for not just to take the measure and say, okay, I changed nothing, but I have my report. So I really change, I really reconsidering the solution, the architecture, the design uh, of the solution based on true facts. On not just the fact that we want to elaborate the right architecture. Okay, so why continuous architecture is better? It's feedback. If you understand that uh, feedback is the keyword and my uh, the only concept you have to remember, you can go for more coffee and so that, that, that's all for today. Uh, no, I will try to elaborate a bit more. Uh, it's, better, it's better than what? It's better than no architecture at all, which is a great uh, debate and maybe a great divide with many people from Agile world. They consider they don't want to do architecture. Uh, when I discuss with them, uh, Many of the times, in fact, they, they like architecture, and they like to do architecture, but they do not like architects, <laughs> uh, so, which is a real problem for our profession, just to be sure that maybe we don't have the, the right uh, way to, to behave with people. Uh, and it's very, very frequent, maybe 80% uh, of the time. The, uh, the problem is with the architects, not with the architecture uh, as a concept and as an activity, okay? And it's also better than just big upfront design. So architecture with feedback, that's continuous architecture. Okay, uh, there is many, many things changing with that. Uh, so I'm sorry for the real architects, or the real classical architects in the room. Uh, if you create a grid architecture, you will not win. You will be on the second place. If we create the good architecture, you will be on the third place. Okay? The new things we have to invent, we have to define, we have to create with other people is the good enough architecture. Things that Eric Cohen from Thales uh, used the, the, the lean thinking or the, the lean approach for EA. And I said that we, we want just enough architecture. And we want, yes, we want just enough architecture to produce the good enough architecture. And I do not know just now how to really define what is the good enough architecture, which is the problem. Uh, but what is the good news with the fact that I don't really know what is the good enough architecture? Feedback. So I start with an architecture. Then we have the feedback and we can create a better architecture, step by step. But we have to accept that we don't, we will never produce the great architecture we want to produce. Uh, maybe you know the, the quote from, I think it's uh, Mr. Gary Doucet from the Canada. And if you are working on Toga for looking from viewpoints concept in architecture, uh, there was a very powerful quote from this guy, which is an enterprise architect in the government in Canada, something like that, general secretary, I think. And the, his quote is, architecture is not to create better architecture. Architecture is to create better enterprise. I think that the concept of good enough architecture, it's more creating a better enterprise than to create a better architecture. And once again, it's probably a real change for many architects. Okay? Another problem with the classical way we do programs and projects is that we, uh, we have the sequence. Many people from the Agile don't like the word sequence. In fact, what they, they do not like is a predefined sequence. That means you, you already know before starting the activity we, we will do. How much that will cost, how many times that will take. And maybe you know that it's not working at all. It's not working for the last 40 years. So that's why the people from the Agile world react from that and say, we can't have a predefined sequence, okay? 
So uh, what if it's not a predefined sequence? Uh, it's, it's not from Welsh. It's, it's not a Welsh player. It's a French player. Uh, uh, that one of the most famous French players. It's called Pierre Villepreux. Uh, and it's played for one of the best clubs in the world. But maybe I'm, near, I'm <laughs> yes, maybe I'm alone in this room and maybe in Paris to, to say that. It's, it's called Brive. It's maybe less famous than the, the Welsh Mountain. Uh, but th that's okay. Uh, the idea of Pierre Villepreux as a player, as, as a trainer, as a rugby manager, it's to develop with the players what you call the uh, situational intelligence. That means that it's not a predefined sequence, and, and you develop uh, individual and collective uh, skills, 